Welcome back to the Lantern Rouge Cycle Podcast here with Benji, as always, for the preview of the men and women's Olympic time trial. It's on Wednesday very early. I think I learned to the women's like 4 a.m. kickoff on four, uh, yeah, on Wednesday. But men's first, then women's. But before we get into the preview, mention our show partner, LaCole. They produce performance cycling apparel with a technical focus. They've supported the pod during the Giro last year, during the crazy COVID times, and then they signed up for the full year this year. Um, it's a bit cold in Andorra today and I've whipped out. I never know whether it's appropriate to wear cycling gear off the bike, to wear a full cycling rain jacket uh, just walking around. So is that normal? Do you also do that? My wife mm. thinks it's not great. What do you think, Benji? I think I needed one today because I, I woke up this morning and it was like straight up raining like crazy buckets out of the sky. And I was, if I go outside, I might as well have a local rain jacket because I'm going to need it. <laughs> so, yes, uh, that's what I've been doing, getting a few funny looks. But onto the men's road race parkour, 44 kilometers long, very, very hilly. Uh, hillier than Harrogate, one of the hillier than any of the Tour de France TTs. I think 750, 760 meters of elevation gain during this TT, and it's almost all up and down. Got 2K, 6% twice and then loads of other climbs which don't aren't really categorized but seem to be five to six percent as well so there seems to be one intermediate time check at 22 k's uh it's on the fuji speedway circuit begins and ends there and um yeah is this is this harder than the harrogate parkour benji is my first question in 2019 mm, i think that is definitely a hard parkour i don't 100 percent remember every single gradient on the harrogate parkour but this one is definitely decent rolling climbs you've got basically a circuit twice and each has that climb you mentioned the 6.2 percent one where there's a section towards the end of it that goes up to nine percent then when that is in a time trial then you're gonna start thinking if it's if it's longer than i don't know five kilometers at ten percent then people are already starting to think about switching bikes i don't think that's the case on this park where that seems to be a bit over the top but I certainly think it's a, a TT that is for the ones that can handle rolling hills. And that is what might cause for a uh, an interesting battle at the top because that's where a lot of riders fit in, in my eyes. We'll just run through the start list and the big names quickly. Uh, Switzerland, Stefan Kuhn, Gino Maida, then Austria, Conrad. Roglic for Slovenia didn't look so good at the road race. Izaguirre, Jon Izaguirre, he came top three, I think, in that Dauphiné Hilly TT. Benji for Spain, Sharkman for Germany, Cavagna for France, Kasper Asgren, just one rider for Denmark, no Jonas Lingard, not at the Olympics. McNulty, Cranach for US, very strong duo. Then Dennis and Port for Australia, Rigo for Colombia, Thomas for Great Britain, Almeida and Nelson Oliveira for Portugal. Betiol and Ghana for Italy, another very strong duo as well as yeah. Belgium. Van Aert, Evenepoel, just one for Netherlands, Dumoulin. Patrick Bevan, I think fourth on that Harrogate parkour in 2019. For New yeah. Zealand and Vlasov for Russia, Bodnar Poland and uh, Stefan de Bord. South Africa and Lutschenko for Kazakhstan are the main names. Which of the duos do you think are the strongest, Benji? Which country do you think could actually take maybe two of the top six spots. I'm picking Ganner and Betiol. I think Ganner and Betiol are definitely ones that could do that because Betiol has been relatively consistent when it comes to time trials. He has not done a long one like this too often, but his uh, final ones, the longest one of the season that he did, was also a strong performance. And that was the last one in the Giro, I think, seventh in the end, 30.3 yeah. kilometers. But of course, the parkour was basically flat there. So that's a complete difference. But you'd say that with Betiol, a hilly parkour would honestly fit him perhaps a bit better. So I dare to say that he should do well on this parkour. Are you afraid for Ghana, knowing yeah. the climbing on this? Uh, Ghana's second favorite. I just, I really struggle to see Ghana winning this. It's so hilly. Um, and unless he's lost a lot of weight, it's going to be difficult for Ghana. I really like think the, second like, favorite it should be Dennis. I'd take Dennis over Ghana. Like the the final time trial in Tirana, right? One that <laughs> Ghana wasn't going to win? <laughs> exactly. I think the betting here, the top 10 is Van Aert, Ghana second, Van Aert's the favorite, 250. Ghana at like 450. Dennis, then Avonapol, Roglic fifth, then Dumoulin, McNulty at 20s, Askren at 26, Almeida at 26, Cavagna, Kung, Kwiatkowski, and then we're into the 
into the deep long shots. Vlasov at 200 to 1. Um, Vlasov, Benji, he's actually, his TT is not is so different this year compared to last year. Super hilly course. I think, should we be surprised if Vlasov can take T, you know, top five on a course like this? I don't think it's going to happen, personally. I think there's a lot of riders that can go for a top five here. And I think he's more leaning towards potentially kicking into the top 10 with a 10 for ninth spot. But I would dare to say that it's more likely to be an 11th or 12th spot. Sure, his climbing is great. We know that he is a, a great climber on Von 2 last year. We've seen him at the Giro this year. And his time trial has gotten better this year. But despite that, there's actual specialists out there that are so good at this terrain that a rider that usually focuses on the climbing completely and has that time trial as a secondary ability for me, doesn't fit with the top five outsiders for me. I've got a few others that I find more suiting for this. Like we spoke about Bevan, or you spoke about Bevan earlier, where he got that Harrogate, I think, fourth spot. I think this reminds me of that time trial he had in the Vuelta that same year where he got a top three, if I recall correctly, from yeah. Johansson to uh, to Po. Also very climby at the start. The last portion was slightly flat, but the initial part had climbs up to 7% average, I think, the initial climb. So that's what fits there. But the problem with Bevan is that the last two years, we've seen less time trials from him compared to 2019. 2019 was his TT peak so far. And that's why I'm a bit scared for Bevan as well. If he was consistently at the 2019 form at the moment, I'd say instantly, okay, this guy could definitely top five. But right now, it's a bit of a meh in my eyes. I've got other riders that I do value as outsiders that could take a top five and even a podium and might not be seen as that at the moment. Then one of those is McNulty for me. He had obviously the road race already. I don't know how much doing the road race at full fours will affect doing the time trial right now because that could play a role. But thinking outside of that for like a few seconds, I think that McNulty fits great on the sparkle. The climbing's there, his time trial's there, and I think on this parkour, he could probably top five, in all honesty. But do you think that it's going to affect a lot, the riders that have done the road race? Uh, well, I mean, who's who's he competing against that hasn't done it? I guess Ganner and Dennis. Well, for not, did do the road race. Um, I'm just going to go with uh, Roglic did the road race, and now and Evan Paul, and they both look pretty bad. And Roglic mm-hmm. was like, I still got pain in my back. Dumoulin did it, and didn't really did kind of what we expected, so I don't know. And he, they've had a fair few days to recover. Four days, I think he should be fine. I mean, I'm, my top going with my top three, I think Van Aert will win. I think the way he rode in that Tour de France TT, mm. and then it suits him more than Ghana with all the climbing. I think Van Aert is appropriately the favourite. He should probably win. Uh, McNulty top three, I think, is very very likely because that Basque Country TT was very hilly. Maybe the same meters climbing per per kilometre. He came second behind Roglic Benji, very close by like two seconds or something. Yeah. And he, I think he might have even had unfavorable wind conditions as well. So I really, really like McNulty for top three. And I don't know, it's just hard with Dennis Benji because Dennis should suit him. But then yeah. the his Tour de Swiss TT is it hard, is it too harsh to judge him on that Tour de Swiss TT uh, where? It was, you know, a lot of climbing, more of an extended climb. That was so weird, that one. And then the prologue, it didn't look good, but then he won the prologue at Romandie. Didn't do so well in the Freiburg TT at Romandie, but he won the Bagnoles Rolly TT at Catalonia. So he's been inconsistent this year. Uh, even the Paranese TT where he came sixth behind Visiger, Cavagna, Rob Lich, McNulty. So I don't know. I don't know what Dennis we're going to get. He usually performs really well at World Champs and Olympics. Um so, but yeah, I feel more strongly about Van Aert and McNulty in the top three. Who's okay. your top three? Well, before I mention them, I do want to like go back towards the uh, McNulty TT you said. Uh, was it the Basque Country one? Yeah. Was that the one where Lutsenko also won? No, 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 that was dope. Which today. one did Lutsenko? Yeah, that, that Lutsenko TT. Do you think that's going to matter for this? That was more punchy climbs, mm-hmm. apparently they said, rather than like a 2K 6%. It was like punchy and then... Um, get over it, levels off. Uh, apparently, that's what it was like. Izaguirre did came second there. Azrin came third. They're both here as well. 
I don't, no, I don't see Fulchenko, frankly. Okay. Okay. <laughs> it just his TTs at the tour were were actually worse than I expected. I, I expected him to top ten both, and he didn't. Yep. Um, and they were longer climbs, I think, on one of them. So no, I don't see much for Lutschenko. I kind of expect him to be like seven or eighth, some or something like that, because towards the end of the Tour de France, he was slightly getting worse. He was having recovery issues throughout the stage. It felt like when seeing him on the real mountain stages towards the end and at the Olympic road race, he disappointed little, to be honest, for me personally. So based on that, extrapolating that, I'm also like a bit in there when it comes to his performance, but I'll actually uh, go for an upset here and I'll betray my nation once again and say that Fanad will not win the time trial, even though he's, <laughs> he, he's definitely like one of the favorites, let's be real. If he wins, then... Yeah, it's not going to be a surprise, but... He literally is the favorite. Yeah, okay. <laughs> I think I'm going to say Kasper Asgren. And the nah, reason I'm doing no so... Shot. Nah, <laughs> I'm calling it... Jonas, Kasper... would, Jonas would spank Kasper Asgren on this. They, still, they don't even have the best time trials. I them. believe in Asgren. <laughs> so I've, can... I've got the feeling that... First of all, it's 44 kilometers. It's a very long time trial. It's yep. not one of those 20 kilometer world championships like we had last year or something, 25, what was it? But the 44 ones means that it's really long. And as a consequence, the continuous keeping the same pace for 44 kilometers will be important. That's a bloody time trial. <laughs> it's the definition of it. But Kasper Asgren has a special ability in that, that he just he can just keep on hitting the wall and hitting true walls throughout an entire parkour. And in his entire career, I haven't seen him actually like collapse properly in a time trial or something like that. So I think that the climbing is not hard enough to put him outside of the people that could get a medal here. I think that he can win this time trial. <laughs> like, yeah, I, I believe in it. I think that Kasper Asgren can can win this time trial and like there obviously there's plenty of other people you've got von Aert, like you mentioned but like he's favorite it's boring to support the favorite <laughs> what about Avonapol after he apparently said his legs he didn't he did that one attack in the road race and then decided ah fuck this I'm not helping my von Aert, and just sat up um is, is his version of events to rest up for the TT what his fourth favorite I think that's it's pretty short. It is a course that should suit him, but um, yeah, yeah. Just, I'd be surprised if he, very surprised if he wins this. It was short on the road race as well, we thought, and it turned out to be exactly that. And on the ITT, the parkour suits him quite perfectly for a time trial, but we haven't seen the consistency in that all year. And obviously, he's come back from the injury. He's gone into the Giro. He started off a decent time trial result. His time trial there was pretty good in the prologue, was it? I think it was just a bit too long for a prologue and then we saw him in the belgian championships lose from lampard on a pretty flat parkour but then again that was in lampard's basically basement his own his own city so <laughs> um i guess that helps a bit but i still think that even should have performed a bit better there looking at the future and we're now a month later something like that so i'm not fully confident in the Remco for this one. And I think it's more likely that he's going to finish like fifth or sixth somewhere. And not in that, not in that podium even. I think that Van Aert's the rider that is going to perform for Belgium. But I've got Asgreen in first. I've got Van Aert in second. And I've got... The fat person is the hardest, I think. Yeah. I think McNulty as well. Because like... Dennis is too inconsistent for me to call it out. Because... He can always surprise. He did it in, was it 2019 where he became world champion? 2018? Uh, I think 2019 it was. Where he had the entire break after the Tour de France where he left there. And then suddenly he he banged the entire world championships time trial. So he can act out very surprisingly and have a great time trial. But we got to base ourselves on the stuff that we've seen recently. And for me, that's not enough to call him out for a podium here. I think that it's likely like Imola where he will end very close, but not on those top steps. But um, what about the other right. question marks? Dom Thomas Dumoulin Roglic. What are you expecting from Thomas? Didn't look great at the tour. I'm not expecting too much. Dumoulin 
on the Netherlands ITT on his return, but I don't yeah, expect but... him to win. And then Roglic, I, I'm maybe top five for Roglic if he's feeling okay. The Moulin's time trial at Swiss was great, but that was a mountain time trial, so it's hard to really judge on that. Same for Mater, those two riders. What do we know about Mater's time trial so far on the flatter parkours? I think that the last time trial he did was also that mountain time trial. Mate. And outside Look. of that, nah, like, no. King is the man at Swiss, but he's not really the man I portray on this parkour. It's too climby for me, I think. Lawson Craddock's a dollar forty head to head against Juno Mater. I've actually I bet I bet the maximum on it. Lawson Craddock sixth at Harrogate, just won the US World Cha- uh, National Champs. Good on Healy Long TTs. It's the most outrageous odds I've ever seen. I mean, it's not I, financial I, advice. <laughs> Craddock is Craddock should be Gino Mater on the CT. Yeah, and Craddock also <laughs> has like performed quite well on occasions as well on parkour similar to this. So yeah. it wouldn't surprise me if he's closer. But meh, when it comes to consistency, I'm not looking at him for a for a medal here. Certainly, I think 10. McNulty's the man on his team that does it. Are there people that you think that could really surprise? Betty Okay. I think Bertie all the way is climbing on in the road race. I think you look at his results on flat TTs this year that maybe don't suit him so much. Seventh in the Milan TT, uh, where it was Terreno sixth. I quite like that Terreno sixth. Uh, I think I think this suits him a lot. It wouldn't supr- if he got a, a medal. It wouldn't surprise me. It wouldn't surprise me. If he, um, I feel feel like we're underrating Ganner a lot, but yeah. I mean his results this year have been. Maybe not as good as last year. I mean, in, in the national champs, ITT, what happened there? He got beaten by Sobrero. Is that a slow TT, Benji? So that was a one-hour TT, and he lost, came behind Sobrero, Fini, Catania. Um, so I think, yeah, people will underrate how hard the parkour is and how much it affects uh, Filippo Ganna personally. So, uh, yeah, I think we're, we're both of the same view with respect to Ganna. Uh, yeah, and we keep on saying, oh, this rider could top five and so forth, but... I think I've said it for like seven riders now, so that's not going to work. But I think Ghana could also top five. But it's yeah, like, mean. yeah, it's going to be hard for eight riders to top five. So hmm. when it comes to Ghana, the annoying part is that, like you said, he's a bit inconsistent this year. But he's also performed decently at time trials with climbs in it. But we haven't seen him do that on a parkour similar to this. It's not been like... Six percent climbs twice. They're not the craziest climbs, but like the entire parkour is basically rolling hills. So we got to keep that in mind. And yeah, that's why I'm like not really seeing him for the gold medal. It wouldn't surprise me if he still podium second or third using that huge engine on every single other terrain that is not a six to nine percent gradient uphill. But after Van Aert's performance and, of course, Asgreen's future performance, I uh, I think it's going to be hard to beat those two. Yeah, I think it's going to be, yeah. I think even Asgreen has a bit of an advantage as well. But, yeah, that was the men's TT preview. I think there's a lot of, um, like, I'll be interested to see how does Luchenko go against Roberto yeah. Uran. Oh, Almeida. Well. Almeida, we haven't really mentioned him. I've been... I, if, there, if there's a young guy who's going to podium, uh, I'd take McNulty over Almeida. Same. Um, so, yeah. Almeida, I, I also didn't like his shape at the road race at all. Uh, so maybe maybe that's a heat thing. Maybe it's not in his Portuguese. should be pretty good in the heat. Uh, but, yeah, I love watching all the all the matchups, and I, yeah, I'll yeah, i shamelessly say that I love betting on the teaching matchups at races like this. Um, but, yeah, any – I think what was my outrageous pick, Benji? I didn't – did you, your outrageous pick is your actual pick to win. I basically <laughs> said Rafa well, Nart to win. You said Asgren to win. Um, I think before we started recording, you said Yuri Sagan would destroy everyone, right? He could. He could. I mean, if he gets to do one lap. Um, will they tell <laughs> Doom? Yeah. Maybe hopefully the Netherlands coaching and everyone tell Doom on the actual parkour. Or yeah, and, and, the, the, and the car gaps. behind. They're going to be yeah. like, turn turn left and he's going to turn right. <laughs> yeah. I think Vlasov doing well will, be, will surprise a lot of people, but it's consistent with how he's done in. Hilly TTs like fifth at Paris in that TT. 